What's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is Dustin, Berserker Bear, another episode of Bushwhacking History. Let's get right into it. We're going to do the origins of the comedy and tragedy masks of theater, also known as Greek theater masks, also referred to as the Sock and Buskin. We're going to read two articles. If you're going through it, doing a cursory search, just as I did, you might come up with these two different articles that we're going to read from. One is from ASOR, the ancient Near East today, current news about the ancient past, and a little bit more condensed version right here for you. I'll leave the links in the description. We're going to read this article to give us historical context on what the masks of the possible masquerade are. Okay, we're also going to read this article to give theatric historical context and we're going to take a, a, a peruse through my recent IG posts about themes well I've noticed the theme of the masquerade in these specific truth drops if you will through movie cinema media and games also that I just pay attention and, um, you know, all I aim to do here is present, you know, a cross-section of the queries that I have in my head regarding this extremely relevant theme of the masquerade and its esoteric reverence in the occult, seemingly, okay? You know, I'll, I'll use some mainstream articles, these two articles, and uh, pop culture, the movies, and... Uh, the games also for uh, the truth drops and possible revelation of method as to why they're so revered in the occult and it's hard to research the connections between them because if you look up this stuff in Wikipedia you see Greek um, you see Greek theater but you don't necessarily see the occultic undertone and why it's revered we're gonna go over that and as I normally do, I'm just going to show you guys a bunch of truth drops as I see them, as I go through my day-to-day. -day. Oh, and you might see some of my library picks. Also, stick around for the end because we're going to see, you know, maybe, possibly, something like this. Whoa, what's going on there? Is that a step well being buried? We'll try to figure it out. So, welcome back to another edition of Bushwhacking History with Berserker Bear. We're going to get into the masquerade. Let's dance. Okay, so let's start off with the ancient Near East today. I'm just going to read off. Let's go. Thanks for stopping by. Please like, share, and subscribe. Okay, American Society of Overseas Research. Masks are common products of human experience. But while disguised activities are attested in many societies, the use of masks is inconsistent and often limited to particular groups of people, settlements, or regions, or a specific moment during the year. In past, societies humans may have masked themselves as human-like figures animals hybrid creatures with mixed human and animal elements or even given themselves imaginary features what is the archaeological evidence for masked activities in the ancient Mediterranean for the period preceding the emergence of the theater the data are scanty varied and inconsistently interpreted by scholars Disguises may have not been limited to the face and were mostly made of perishable materials, which usually are not preserved in the archaeological record. Archaeologists must therefore rely on other evidence, iconography, texts, and surviving artifacts. But iconographic sources can be misleading. Animal-headed figures cannot always be interpreted as humans wearing animal masks. 
texts occasionally testify that ancient people dressed in animal skins for ceremonies, a use that would have otherwise remained archaeologically unattested. These difficulties help explain scholars working on masquerade principle. Oh, these difficulties help explain why scholars working on masquerades principally focus on clay and stone masks. But what did ancient people consider to be masks? Ancient words for masks are mostly known, unknown. While the modern term is used with reverence, okay. Ancient words for masks are mostly unknown, while the modern term is used with reference to a variety of artifacts representing a face, including discs, sculpted heads, and plaques. If the primary purpose of a mask is to conceal the wearer's identity while showing someone else's face, reliable evidence of such use can be conventionally recognized in objects that can be worn on the face while the wearer performs such action. These type of artifact backless faces with apertures for eyes, sometimes cut out mouths and rarely even holes for nostrils is currently only attested from pre-pottery Neolithic period in the Near East. An important corpus comes from the region between the Judean hills and desert in southern Levant, 8500 to 6400 BCE. But recently some coveal heads, protomes from upper Mesopotamia, have also assigned the function. Clay masks pointed chins from a later date are attested in the so-called elite pre-dynastic cemetery at Heriakonopolis, ancient Neken, in Upper Egypt, 3700 to 3600 BCE. An uninterrupted use of clay masks is attested in the Levant from the very end of the Middle Bronze Age to at least the Persian period, mid-17th, 16th to the 4th century BCE. During the Late Bronze, clay masks were also used in the Middle Euphrates Valley and from the late 13th century BCE up to the Hellenistic period in Cyprus. The variety of iconog iconographies, contexts of use, manufacture, and decoration techniques qualify these mostly local and independent phenomena. But most of the clay masks from the Iron Age Levant are attested in sites on the central coast, a region conventionally identified with ancient Phoenicia. In comparison with other regions of the Levant, Phoenician masks stand out because they are mostly found in tombs and include female but not animal iconography. They also occur in industrial areas, temples, and secular buildings, which attest to a variety of uses and meanings. The only common thread may be a connection to religion, broadly construed. Apart from female examples, the Phoenician masks represent beardless, short and long bearded and wrinkled faces. Again, I'll leave the links for this in the description, both of these articles. Please like, share, subscribe. I have recently proposed these to be considered from portraits of young, adult, and elderly figures, respectively, representing distinct stages of human life and possibly connected to rites of passage. Of these types, the beardless young faced survived in Greek style in the Persian period when a new iconography, the Selenic mass with horse face like features appeared, attesting that the Phoenician repertoire became open to non-local elements. Hmm. During the Iron Age, masks were painted in part or in full. In Phoenician examples, color sometimes covered parts of the face linked to senses such as eyes, mouth, and ears. This may suggest these parts played a role during the disguised activities, 
very important. Similarly, an important role for the mouth through words and or sounds may explain the frequent appearance of cutout and even grimacing mouths. This Levantine masking tradition was kept alive by Phoenician speaking groups moving westwards and founding the new communities and settlements in the central western Mediterranean, where the earliest fragmentary examples found so far date from the late 8th century BCE. And then it shows a map of the western Mediterranean with southern tip of well, the Iberian Peninsula, Spain. In the West, some types previously attested in the Levant continue to occur, albeit under a different guise. Female masks, characters with long beards, elderly people, and from the 5th century BCE, Selenus types. But new types also appeared, possibly created in Punic places such as Carthage, Motia, Ibiza, and Cadiz. Among the new masks allegedly created at Carthage, one notable case is the grinning type. Now that reminds me, let's do some side, you know, it just reminds me, it's always, because of my interest in film and uh, theater and movies, I've always been curious about what these things are. Okay, so let's keep going. The grinning mask is most iconic type which shows its name, which owes its name to the wide V-shaped smile representing the focal point of the spectators. This type, which is also characterized by furrows, possibly wrinkles on the forehead and cheekbones, is attested for about five centuries from the second quarter of the seventh to the mid 2nd century BCE. During this period, some features changed. Oversized ears appeared. Astral symbols on the forehead were replaced by animal, vegetal, and aniconic motifs. In this iconography, was reproduced in various media such as amulets and credule. It also appeared throughout the central Mediterranean of Sicily, Sardinia, and Ibiza, attesting to the importance of the superhuman character. But as is often the case with ancient masks, the precise identity cannot be established. Certain contexts such as Tophets support a connection with the god Baal, Haman, and or his circle. While some of the motifs on the masks, such as a lion, rosette, or lotus, instead recall female characters, the wrinkles, smile, and oversized ears suggest the grinning mask may represent a benevolent old man willing to hear and fulfill worshippers' prayers. The latest example of this group, the oversized mask from the Chappelle cartoon shows the iconographic influence of Greek theatrical masks. And we're going to get into that. Please stick with me. I hope you appreciate this gravy. We're going to go into another reading and we're going to show some truth drop uh, clips from a lot of movies. So that's how I roll, guys. Continuing on. Greek theatrical masks. The end of the Levantine masking tradition during the Hellenistic period remains largely unexplained. Causes and timing of this process have not yet been established, but the appearance of theatrical masks during this era and some of the former manufacturing centers of masks in the central and western Mediterranean may imply a connection to the emergence of theater. So, very interesting, and it says theater there. Now, speaking of theater, let's get into some truth drops where I notice, let's see if this gets through the algorithms of the, the gates of YouTube when I put this through, but recently I played, and come check out my IG, uh, Assassin's Creed, or at least I recently beat it, I've had it for a very long period of time, and sometimes I acquire games in the middle of playing other ones, and, you know, start playing this one, haven't beat that one, 
yada yada. Played Origins recently, beat that. I have some clips from that. I also have Syndicate that I showed clips of in some videos recently. Assassin's Creed is one of the games that show a lot of revelation of method, if you will. So, without getting too long-winded, I have another article to read about the theater history of the masks. Let's show a truth drop. This is a trailer from Assassin's Creed Origins. Pause this. Mute myself. Oh, excuse me. This is going to be a trailer for Assassin's Creed Origins. Keep in mind what the reading said about how these masks can conceal certain activities. And I'm going to show a couple more clips of this of this game because it's a very, very telling one. And I believe it could be a revelation of method of the dark undertone of what's going on with the masquerade. Because history seems to be like, oh, well, we don't know. And it's all, you know, obfuse or it's trying to be obfuscated, if you will. You know how I am with that. I'm not going to placate into too much of getting into conspiratorial stuff. I'm just showing you what I see. A cross section of my mind, if you will. Do you remember me? Do you remember me? We have already met. You've chosen the wrong side. We are so many. We are everywhere. You remember. It was the worst day of your life. We'll meet again. It will be the last day of your life. Boom. So keep in mind what it says about concealing activities. And let's go into the next clip. Now, Bayek is the protagonist of the game. And he's kind of a hero in his local village of Siwa. And he comes back from doing a mission, maybe a walkabout, if you will. And he notices certain goings-on in his area. And this is under the Ptolemaic rule in Egypt. Notice what Bayek notices. War elephants, huh? Of course you got the raptor over everything. This game was awesome. Can't say the same about, unfortunately, cannot say the same about Valhalla. But I digress. Okay, so he's walking through his neighborhood and seeing what's going on. Getting a general sense of his neighborhood as he's been gone. And then who comes strolling through. Again, notice what Bayek notices. See that? There was somebody behind Ptolemy. A hidden hand, if you will. And it's covered by a mask. Masquerade. Let's get into a little bit more gravy of the game. And underline in bold and italicize the undertone that uh, the mask and the masquerade is meant to hide and conceal. And as it shows the the grinning and the grimacing in the theater masks I believe it's an esoteric way to symbolize metaphorically the inner peace and the good and the bad of individual humans that can't be succumbed to will of others and that's very malevolent that's very bad I don't condone that whatsoever you guys know my faith but I'm just again cross-section of my mind Let's get into a little bit more of how these, what you would say, hidden hand groups possibly may operate. 
More Assassin's Creed Origins. Okay, are you hot? Go ahead. Try it your way. I'll leave my son out of this! Your son has something to explain to you. Would the Ibis show him the orb? Notice how they're all masked. He eventually has to find in, in, these individual fallen men. We believe we need this to enter the vault. The, 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 this is a waste of time! The boy is frightened. It's all right. Papa, they need you to tell them about the vault. They need to know how to use this. As measure, you must have some clue or key or legend that explains its use. I don't know anything about this vault! Please leave my son out of my this! Lord. The father has been aroused. He insists he will be discovered. Here. Quickly! Talk to your son. If the vault isn't open when we return, you'll never see him again. Again, malevolent activities. No bueno. And, you know, you can't see this in something like this as I'm playing. Again, I, I like to watch movies. You can't see and watch something like that and not think of, oh, for example, this movie. Okay, this is a clip from Eyes Wide Shut. Okay, this has got the whole mask masquerade thing going on in the Herio Scamos. If you go to my IG, posted something about it here, you know. I do auxiliary research at my IG. You can get to it from my uh, YouTube page. So, of course, the uh, Grand Kahuna is eyes wide shut. We're going to go over the Mask movie, too, which I think is also a revelation of method truth drop with Jim Carrey. But, again, we all know about eyes wide shut with Kubrick, or maybe we, we all don't. But just shining light into some dark places here. And maybe it's... Well, I'm not going to get into attention. Anyway, also, R.L. Stein Goosebumps, The Haunted Mask. My younger sister had this movie, or the VHS, laying around in the house. My parents, it's probably still at my parents' house. After putting on the mask, the, the plot in this one, The Haunted Mask, after putting on the mask, she starts acting differently and discovers that the mask has become her face. Okay? Very interesting, very esoteric occult ish if you will the mask the movie now we're going to get into we're gonna, i'm going to read that clip uh again those clips from uh oh, excuse me those clips from the game assassin's creed origins i can't look at this face right here that you see center screen and not just automatically go to you know the movie how do you not think of that so that's all I'm doing here is doing some sideways research, putting things together as I see them. Uh, let's do another lead in to reading the theater movie because Tom Cruise plays a role, not in just that, in just uh, Eyes Wide Shut, but another pretty cool movie called Vanilla Sky. And I'm going to play a clip from that movie. And it has to do with masks also. So pay attention because this is a little bit more poignant. And I do like Tom Cruise as an actor. So... You'll see some clips of his movies also. Bear with me. Sorry if I'm long-winded. I hope you appreciate clips and uh, video games and all that stuff. This is a um, scene from Vanilla Sky when they're uh, proposing that he wears a mask to cover his messed up face from an accident. Nobody here to... Needless to say, the character that Tom Cruise plays may have issues with vanity. And I'll just leave it at that. Nobody here takes your feelings for granted. We did prepare something for you based on the preliminary examination. Tell me. Bring it on. It's sometimes useful in the early stages of rejection. It's a facial prosthetic. It was two weeks in the making. Thank you, Carly. A facial prosthetic. The aesthetic replacement does work. Emotionally and 
actually. And the plastic in the aesthetic shield also blocks out abusive rays and assists in the regeneration of cells. So it's an aesthetic regenerative shield? That's correct. Exactly. And the ergonomics of the plate barrier allows you to interact reflexively with the movements of your own face. Oh, I see. It's a helpful unit. Good. Because for a minute there, I thought we were talking about a fucking mask! It's only a mask. If you treat it that way. Oh, no. It's great. This completely takes care of Halloween. But what about the other 364 days of the year? Nobody here takes your feelings for granted. You know, poignant and humorous there. So keep that in mind when you send your kid out off to school and they have to wear one of those things, you know? I know we're going through a lot of stuff right now and no one's judging anybody. But uh, shit's getting reals out there, y'all. You know? And uh, keep your faith up. Just keep that in mind. No one's judging anybody. But again, that light at the, head, uh, at the end of the tunnel is a uh, daylight, not a freight train. Okay, so that was a clip from Vanilla Sky, poignant and a little bit humorous, and sometimes that's a good way to drive a point home. So from that to this article, let's keep going. Let's give some more historical theatric context. See if I can't uh, read this one aloud as well. Okay, this is the origins of the comedy and tragedy masks of theater. When people think of theater, it's probably one of the most well-known symbols that comes to mind with many interpretations that go beyond just the comedy and tragedy, happy and sad meeting. The comedy and tragedy symbol dates back to Greek mythology and has been the central representation of the creative arts for decades. This includes theater, film, and television. It's one of my favorite symbols and is still widely used today. If we go back to ancient Greece, it is said that these masks were used in early plays to represent the emotions the characters were feeling. It was easier for the audience members who were sitting far away from the stage to see the masks and the emotions they were portraying. At that time, women were not allowed to act in any of the plays, so the men were able to wear these masks, especially if they had to play a female part. People often think these masks were just a symbol or design created by early thespians, but it actually started out as a tangible mask that was worn. It was considered a costume piece and then made itself more present until it became, it became well known. It became a well-known worldwide symbol. In a historical sense, there are two names for each mask. The name Melpomene represents the tragedy mask or muse of tragedy and the name Thalia represents the comedy mask or muse of comedy. Melpo is the shorter name for Melpomene meaning a celebration of dance and song. Although this doesn't seem overly appropriate because Melpomene is the tragedy mask it does fit in a theatrical sense in general. Thalia comes from the Greek verb Thaline meaning to flourish or be verdant. Melpomene and Thalia were the daughters of Zeus. People often relate the masks to Dionysus originally. Dionysus is a Greek god of wine. The masks depict the happy and sad emotions that drinking wine can bring. They have also been linked to the Greek god Janus which is known as the two-faced god of beginnings. Keep this in mind for Loki afterwards. It is said that Janus lent the name to the masks. Although the years, oh, through the years, many versions of the masks have been designed, but they all portray the same basic emotions of happiness and sadness, of course. There are some modern takes on the masks, but nothing totally out of the ordinary. I think it's interesting to take a deeper look into some of the actual plays that are considered comedies and tragedies in theater. Shakespeare plays are a popular genre that comes to mind when thinking about these two very distinct types of plays because Shakespeare literally writes comedies and tragedies. 
some tragedies that come to mind instantly are Macbeth, King Lear, Othello, Romeo and Juliet, and Julius Caesar. Some comedies that come to mind are Much Ado About Nothing, The Comedy of Errors, Twelfth Night, and As You Like It. These are all absolute favorites of mine, and I think they are the most distinct when thinking of comedies and tragedies. Theater is not the same without this symbol and is remembered by so many. Whether it's related to ancient Greek times or as a general statement in the arts, it is always connected back to theater and I think it is something that will be, remem- will be remembered hundreds of years from now. It is the face of the arts, but it is also the root of the arts. So that's very interesting when you, you know, keep in mind that these things may have been put forth by ancient thespians as it said in that article and when I heard that I I immediately thought of another truth drop revelation of method possibility here let's go into my uh, albums and Twilight Zone episode actually this one right here called The Masks let's take a little brief look into that for theater purposes and I'm just going to play a montage of it. Because keep in mind, ancients, okay? To Jason, F- to Jason Foster, a tired ancient who on this particular Mardi Gras evening will leave the earth. But before departing, he has some things to do, some services to perform, some debts to pay, and some justice to mete out. This is New Orleans Mardi Gras time. It is also... The Twilight Zone. Foster insists each family member has to wear a special mask until midnight. I'm told that in addition to their artistic value, they have certain, uh, certain properties. Foster is gone. His family gathers to mourn. Or so you'd think. At long last, he's dead. Good. Now, let's celebrate. They were, his family was uh, waiting for him to pass so they can get his inheritance. And because of their own greed, there was something to happen. Their joy doesn't last very long. They soon discovered to their horror that their faces had mutated into the hideous features of their masks. Recall at the beginning of the episode, Mr. Foster was noticeably agitated. However, after finally passing away, his doctor notes, this must be death. No horror, no fear, nothing but peace. Mardi Gras incident. The Dramatis Personae being four people who came to celebrate. And in a sense, let themselves go. This they did with a vengeance. Let themselves go. That's another underlying esoteric, you know, occult theme to these masks, type of the masquerade, where it's, it's symbolizing or it's a metaphorical notion that there could be another side to somebody and they could be hiding it with when they hide the eye you think of the Akkadian um, mask of Sargon of Akkad his left eye is damaged there's a lot of different meanings that could possibly be but if you pay attention to that article when they cover the paint certain cover certain senses it could mean either they were speaking of a lie or they seen a lie and they got to cover it up this is where this stuff comes from guys and I really hope that you think this is interesting because I got some more for you. If you kept in mind the whole notion of the Janus God in that article about the two-faced, I thought of Loki. And when you think of Loki, well, I think of the movie Mask. Because Jim Carrey is another, I think, revealer of truth as a thespian. And he's always in movies where he's got like a dome over him. Shout out to obviously uh, the Truman Show, but he's also in a lot of other movies where, boy, he's a uh, he's a revealer of truth. So it's it's fitting that in the movie The Mask, he plays a person who puts a mask on, finds a mask, and becomes a, a Loki archetype. And let's check that out. I really hope that I can get past the algos on this one when I load it up. I was gonna go live, but sometimes they. They stop me if I if I show these videos during the live, so let's go. 
the mask where you at it's gonna play this one it's where he finds it what are so you doing down there fitting this is a very goofy movie my wife can't wait to watch it with me I just purchased it off of YouTube so I'm, at least I'm paying you YouTube anyway um, a very happenstance circumstance to find the mask you think someone's in an accident drowning in the water he jumps in and the mask appears to him in the water very fitting for Phoenicians possibly but in the movie they attribute it to a Loki archetype and wait do you hear what Ben Stein says but it's just funny how he comes about finding this thing and Carrie delivers a great role in this movie what are you doing down there I'm just looking for my mask. What are you doing down there? Classic. I used to love Jim Carrey. Looking for my mask. Not saying that I don't still love his his movies. Okay, so what happens is he finds that mask. A whole crazy bit of circumstances happen when he puts it on, and he starts to realize that there's some crazy stuff going on, and he gets wind of it by watching. A clip. So, Dr. Newman, you're saying that everybody wears a go. mask? That's correct, Wendy. We all wear masks, metaphorically speaking. We suppress the id, our darkest desires, and adopt a more socially acceptable image. <laughs> this is kind of where it underlines the undertone of it being esoteric, even possible occult. Well, the book is, of course, The Masks We Wear by Dr. Arthur Newman. Thank you so much for being with us today. <laughs> What's the matter with you? What is it? What are you looking for, huh? You like this thing? You like it? The masks we wear. That's correct, Wendy. We all wear masks, metaphorically speaking. Notice how it's presented in the mirror, the duality, okay? Stop and narrate a little bit. Maybe that'll help me get by. But again, the mirror directors know what's going on when it's on the camera they want you to think like what they're showing you so it's in the mirror it's duality it's a reference to duality <laughs> yeah, whoa right. what Not going to go too far into that because, again, I might not even be able to load this mo this uh, video up. If you're here and you've been this far this with me, an interesting piece, Mr. please hit like, share, subscribe, and I appreciate you guys coming back always. Thank you. This is an interesting piece, Mr. Ipkus. Looks like 4th or 5th century Scandinavian, possibly a representation of one of the Norse night gods, maybe Loki. So that's interesting. When you, I showed you those pictures and the clips from the Assassin's Creed Origins, it looked more similar to that type of mask than I, I wasn't even familiar. And I have a proclivity to Norse. I mean, my name Dustin means Stone of Thors, literally. Um, never was I familiar with, and I certainly could be ignorant to it, that uh, Loki and stuff were attributed with or at least known for wearing masks. But anyway, I digress. There goes that connection again with the Nordics and Phoenicians, possibly. Now, uh, Phoenicians and the Viking longships look quite similar. Loki? Who's Loki? The Norse god of mischief. Supposedly, he caused so much trouble that Odin banished him from Valhalla forever. Then he could have banished him into that mask. I'm talking about mythology, Mr. Epkis. This is a piece of wood. Okay, so there you go. That occult notion, that undertone esoteric idea that not only what's going on, not only do the masks represent something, they actually could be artifacts or horcruxes where you can actually put a spell into it. So what other uh, clips do I have? Twilight Zone, you've seen those. Obviously, everything reminds me of 
the hairiest gamos in this movie. Check out Eyes Wide Shut Trivia on Internet Movie Database. It's where I get a lot of my research from. What else did I want to show you? Yeah, Greek Theater Mask was always interested in what they were. Now you know. Hopefully you learned something when you came here. Now, that was a little bushwhacking through the, the masquerade. I hope I, again, hope you learned something. And hopefully I had some kind of a cohesive explanation as to the historical significance of these masks in theater and culture. All right, anyway, let's close all these and do a little gravy on the side. Greek theater, okay. What's this place, huh? This place is a step well. Check these things out. Absolutely phenomenal. This place is Rani Ki Vav. I'm sure if you're familiar with Praveen Mohan, he may have done this one, but he goes all over India. Check his channel out. I'll give him a plug, obviously. Okay, so read that. And what I want to show to you is what I showed you in the beginning. This place has a hole in it like this. All right. Let's look that up right quick. And uh, just perusing on Instagram and you see something like this. Whether it was from a YouTube video you've seen passing by, people are familiar with it. People know Praveen Mohan. It might have been on Art of Dino, actually, now that I think about it. That's a good YouTube channel also. I think he uses the word Tartaria a little bit too much, but anyway, it's all gravy. Art of Dino, I think, was had a, a, a thumbnail of this place, and it showed this hole. And then, like, a day later, I'm on my IG. Uh, no, I'm on my IG, and... Uh, Close the window. Hit fire. Oh, and I sent it to my homie, Mr. Brees. Found a video. Actually, let's just show it. Okay, getting back to track. Look at this. Keep an eye on this place right here, or the, how that's situated. And I just want to track back and show you what I did in the beginning. Because I just randomly came up across this video on IG and I'm like what's going on now for those that are of the faith I would say that he works in very matter-of-fact ways for those that aren't of the faith and no judging whatsoever everybody to each his own I can understand how people say that he works in mysterious ways to me as a Christian with my faith that is as it is it's not mysterious it's very matter of fact and what what I just detailed to you happened the way it did because I think I have my faith I was shown that picture of that place Ronnie Kivav on an Art of Dino video that was I think maybe three weeks ago it came out but I just watched it about two or maybe two or three days ago okay and then I'm perusing on IG and then I see a video like this now you tell me that if they bury stuff and I've been saying that for a while I think a lot of people have obviously we know there's a lot under our feet but boy sometimes he just knocks them out of the park with these sinks it's unbelievable they're covering up one of these things I don't know where this is some of this is on yeah, somewhere in Russia, if anyone knows what that says, I'd appreciate the feedback. But look, if they're pouring, I think that they're pouring over the old world. Right here showing it to you. Possibly one of these old step wells. They're more focused in like India and Pakistan, but I guess they're all over the world. I mean, are they literally just straight up pouring concrete into one well? They're not doing a real precise job. And then you got columns here, maybe. What's going on there? Just thought it was interesting. I just want to share it. Give you a cross section of me drawing. And uh, okay, so that was bushwhacking the masquerade and bushwhacking stepwells, right quick. I don't want to be too long winded. 
just under 45 here. Please hit like, share, subscribe. Keep your heads up and your faith up. And keep it sleuthing. I'll report back. Take care, everybody.